Hi there, welcome back to Camera Than Coffee where you and me discuss new and deserving cameras. And today let's have a quick specs breakdown of the new Panasonic GH6 and Sony A7S 3 It's a new channel so if you find this video helpful do consider subscribing. It helps me when you do that. Good, let's begin. So the new hybrid camera Panasonic Lumix GH6 was finally unveiled on 22nd Feb 19 months after the release of much liked Sony A7S 3 and it is priced at approximately $2200, $1300 less than the Sony A7S 3 Big difference here. So is it really worth spending those extra bucks on A7S 3 Well, let's look at all the important specs and find out. Let's start with image quality specs of the camera. The new GH6 features 25.2 megapixel live MOS sensor versus the 12.1 megapixel full frame sensor on Sony A7S 3 Better the sensor, better is the resolution and dynamic range which makes the camera deliver highly detailed images. But honestly speaking, both these cameras should be your video first cameras. Moving on, these are the formats in which both the cameras capture and deliver final images. Talking about the processor, both the cameras have their latest processors of their respective companies, which promise fast processing speed and smooth interface. Not just that, together the new sensor and the powerful processor allow good continuous shooting. Comparatively, GS6 has a higher frequency continuous shooting both mechanical and silent. But what steals the show is the 75 frames per second burst shooting on the new beast GS6. Amazing. Speaking of ISO in case of stills, both the cameras offer good range. But one thing which puts A7S 3 ahead of GH6 is its wider ISO range which goes down to 80 and 102400 on the highest side. And in case of video as well, A7S 3 has a better ISO range which can go down to 80. And speaking of shutter speed, as you can see, GS6 has faster shutter speed which will be helpful in bright daylight shooting. Plus, it has a 60 second long exposure which will be helpful in night shots. Now let's look at the autofocus specs. Both the cameras houses advanced and latest autofocus system which allows smooth and confident continuous focusing in all recording modes. But as heard from my fellow creators, they trust Sony's hybrid autofocus system more than the contrast autofocus system on GH6. If we also look at the numbers, where GH6 has 314 AF points, A7S 3 on the other hand is blessed with 759 face detection autofocus points and 425 densely positioned contrast detection autofocus points, which will definitely boost the AF performance. Here once again as I always say, points do make a difference, but still I would suggest you to look at some real tests before buying one. As we are talking about autofocus, during nighttime photography or in low light situation when light is not in our favor, the new GS6 will focus down to light level of minus 4 EV. But A7S 3 will give you better AF performance as it will focus down to light level of minus 6 EV. On top of this, eye face and head detection is there on both the cameras which is really good and ensures that the shots are sharp and in focus. And yes, both the cameras have animal detection as well. Also not to forget, you do get a focus limiter feature on the new GH6 which allows you to see the minimum and maximum focus distance limit, which is really helpful. Now let's talk about the body. Looking at the dimensions of both the cameras, GH6 seems to be both bigger and heavier than the Sony A7S 3 which is I think because of the larger grip and built-in cooling fan. Good for creators, both the cameras have articulating touchscreen which is really helpful when taking a high angle or low angle shot and obviously when you are vlogging. But the one on GH6 can also be tilted like the one on Fuji X-T3 which prevents HDMI and USB cable to collide with the screen. And speaking of electronic viewfinder, the A7S 3 has a better one as it has 9.43 million dots. And unfortunately, both the cameras don't have an external flash. One really good thing about both the cameras is that it allows high-speed CF Express card to rest inside the camera and deliver faster writing speed and better buffer capabilities. Wow! And now comes the battery. 
Both the cameras have almost similar 2200mAh internally chargeable batteries. However, on papers it looks like the GS6 offers better battery capacity with power save mode in case of stills. And as far as video is concerned, A7S III has a bigger promise. But in real life it varies a lot and totally depends on the way we use it. Next up is weather sealing. And both the cameras are not really weather sealed. Although the cameras feature dust and water resistant construction, this cannot completely prevent dust or water droplets from entering the camera. And lastly, we have E mount on A7S III and micro four thirds mount on the new GH6. Now before we look at the video specs, let's have a quick sneak peek of the important ports on both the cameras. And now the video specs where we'll see a lot of differences. The new Beast GH6 can record anamorphic 5.8K up to 30p and 5.7K up to 60p. And also in case of 4K, the new GH6 can record cinema 4K up to 120p. Whereas the A7S III can do USD 4K up to 120p. And good thing is both the cameras don't have any recording limit. Talking about the full HD slow motion recording, both the cameras are not that far from each other. And when it is about external recording, as you can see, A7S III is the clear winner as it can record raw 16-bit video up to 120p. Wow. And these are the logs present on both the cameras. And not to forget, thanks to the great processing power of GS6, it allows us to internally record ProRes 422HQ and ProRes 422 codec videos in 5.7K up to 30p. And in near future, it will also be available for other resolutions through a firmware update. And yes, both the cameras allow live streaming. And last but not the least, the image stabilizer. The Dual IS2 image stabilizer on GS6 combines the control of body IS and lens OIS to offer 7.5 stops worth of correction, which is 5.5 stops in case of A7S III. This is it guys, thank you so much for stopping by. If the video was helpful, do support me by subscribing. See you in the next video.